Hello, Hope City. Welcome to the De Daily Devo, Pastor Mac. Hey, we're continuing our study in the Great Commission, the great mission of the church to communicate the gospel of Jesus Christ to all around us. So far, we had looked at Mark's gospel that emphasized the preaching ministry of the Great Commission. And so we're to go out and preach. And just to remind you, as we looked at that word, the idea of preaching is eliciting a response from somebody, appealing to the emotions of somebody. It is the concept of invitation. So we want to invite people into a relationship with Jesus Christ. We're asking for a response. And so that is a the, the preaching concept. Then we moved into Luke's gospel, and Luke's gospel gives us a little bit of the informationals of what we are to hit when we're preaching and teaching. And so in that, Luke emphasized that we are to preach repentance, that you're going one direction, you turn around and go in the other direction. You turn away from sin and you turn to God. And then we're told to preach repentance and the forgiveness of sin in the name of Jesus Christ. So we're to emphasize the atoning work of Jesus Christ and the authority of Jesus Christ. Now we are looking at uh, Matthew's gospel in the Great Commission, and we're going to see that Matthew's gospel is going to emphasize the teaching element of the Great Commission. So we looked at preaching. We looked at what some of that message is contained, and now we're going to look at the teaching concept. So turn your Bibles with me to Matthew chapter 28, and we're going to look at verse 19 and 20. So, verse 19, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. So verse 19 says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them the words, or teaching them all the things um, to observe all that I have commanded you. So we have two aspects that is brought to this teaching component. I want to break this down for you for a half a second. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. What does that look like? Making disciples. That Greek word is a Greek word that literally means, comes from a Greek word called mathetis. It is the core, it's a, it's a uh, root word. Now, teaching comes from that root word. So teaching, mathetio, means to teach or to educate, to instruct the student, the learner, the, uh, the disciple. So when we look at this together, that's exactly how Jesus taught his disciples. He gathered them, he, he brought them together, he sat down with them, he did life with them, but he modeled the things that he was trying to communicate to him. So here's the thing I'd like you to see. If preaching is recruiting and motivating ministry of the church, preaching is the recruiting and the motivating ministry of the church, Discipleship or teaching is the maturing ministry of the church. Both of them are absolutely go hand in hand. So there's evangelism going forward and there's teaching those that are responding to the responding to the evangelism. I want to show you how this looks like in um, how this word was used in the book of Acts real quickly. And then I'm going to take you to a great definition or an example of discipleship in 1 Thessalonians. In um, Acts chapter 5, verse 42, uh, he says, Every day in the temple from house to house, they did not cease teaching and preaching that Jesus or that Christ is Jesus, that the Messiah is Jesus. So there you see preaching and teaching. And you can watch this connection throughout the book of Acts. You see this word is used quite often together, preaching and teaching. And what are they teaching? That Christ is Jesus, the Messiah is Jesus. Now let me show you Paul's understanding of how discipleship was to look. Turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, and I'm going to look at verses 5 through 7. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, as it was, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5, it says, Because our gospel came to you not only in word, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit with full conviction. You know what kind of men we proved to be among you for your sake. I want you to note that. He says, look, when we preach the gospel to you, it came to you in power. So you see evangelism, you see spirit-filled, power-infused ministry going forward. But then he also says, you also know what kind of men we were, that we were the men that practiced what we preached. The gospel in which we told you, you see it in our very life. The things that we tell you, we're demonstrating that. Then he goes to verse 6, you became imitators of us. 
you are uh, in imitators of the Lord. For you received the word much affliction with joy in the Holy Spirit so that you became an example. Now that's the kind of discipleship that has power to reach the world. That's what we're talking about right now. When evangelism goes forward and people respond to the gospel message that Jesus Christ came and died for their sins and they can have a new life in Christ, turn away from the old to the new life, be filled with the Holy Spirit, um, and, and walk and grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, it's a whole new ministry. And when that happens, we are to mature them through teaching the ministry. So this is what church should look like. Church should be a function of making disciples that are bringing the truth of God's word into their life and it's being modeled before them and they are modeling God's word. Let me put it to you in a little bit of a different concept. Discipleship involves um, the gospel being written in the fabric of, of our lives. That I am a sinner who's been saved by grace. I've been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, and that testimony has authority in my life, and my life has been changed and transformed by the power of the Spirit because I've yielded to God. When the gospel's written in the fabric of my life, that message preaches out to everyone around us. This is what Paul's writing. He says, I modeled after Jesus. You're modeling after me. You're modeling after Jesus. And that model is being an example that's going out through all of Macedonia or all out through Macedonia. This is power. See, that's power that Satan is afraid of. That's the power of the church to be able to walk in a transformed life because they're a disciple of Jesus Christ. The gospel is not just hearing in the ear, but it is a reality of a life reflecting the beauty in which they are proclaimers. So here's the thing. Let's get out and let's model what the gospel of Jesus Christ is. God bless you.